Let's talk about sharpening of EDCs. Today, our guest star is Sok Terminus, SJLTE Creo CPM S35VN. Well, it's a lightweight, very cool knife designed to be legal in most parts of the world. It's very lightweight folder that we will examine how the sharpening of this knife looks straight from the factory. We will use our microscope, then we will give it a professional sharpening and see what we could do with it. Let's begin. As you may see, we have a G10 handle, as the manufacturer says, reinforced with carbon. And we have a coated blade. Of course, everyone who buys a knife like this would like to keep its aesthetics well, just like if it was out of the box. We will protect this knife during the sharpening, I mean the handle and the blade, to prevent any scratches or, for example, dust getting into the mechanism. Now let's see how the knife cuts. I can't say that this knife is dull, because as you may see, several sections of the cutting edge are pretty sharp, but at some points it starts to tear the paper instead of cutting it. And now let's use the microscope and see the defects of the cutting edge that we are going to eliminate. As you may see, the situation with this cutting edge is pretty common. We can see these scratches from the grinder. The section near the point is not processed well enough, the point doesn't look sharp, but we will make it much better. Near the heel we have a small curve that we will also remove with abrasive stones. And of course the bevel on one side is wider than another, which means that the cutting edge is not symmetrical. This will also be eliminated. Now let's give it some professional touch. I wanted to show you an example how we may protect the handle of a folding knife. You see, we wrapped this knife in paper and fixed it with the masking tape. Also, we made sure that the mechanism is protected from any dust that will fly during the sharpening process. And now we will simply apply a couple of pieces of masking tape to protect the coated blade from any scratches while we clamp it. To keep the aesthetic look of the knife, we will now use the marker to get into the factory angle of sharpening and prevent the widening of the bevels. So we will apply the marker along the cutting edge. So on one side, as you may see, we are erasing the marker from top to the bottom of the bevel. Now let's check another side. Yes, and here we are not reaching the top, only the bottom. You know what I'm curious about this knife? My congratulations to so company that they have 20 degrees straight from the factory, actually that's the angle that I would select for that knife. And now let's begin the sharpening process. We will take the most coarse stone from the box. It would be 100 grit. These stones work with sharpening oil that we have to apply before we start. Just a brief reminder for all of you. We are starting from the side where we have the most narrow bevel. We have to work very carefully near the heel. There is a piece of excessive metal that we want to remove here to make this line straight and flat. And also we have to eliminate a small dull section near the tip. That's why I have to be very careful when I process them to prevent any scratches. If you will ask my opinion, I would 
always prefer stones that work with oil because all the metal dust, all the carbides removed from the stone, they remain inside the oil. They are not flying around and all I have to do is simply use a piece of paper to remove all of that from the knife. If you want to prevent any scratches on the blade coating, remove the sludge towards the cutting edge. So don't slide it along the edge, but simply repeat after me. So now our bevel is symmetrical, we removed this small curve near the heel. The tip looks good enough and it will be improved further with more fine stones. I guess since we have a good burr along the whole length of the cutting edge, it's time to change the stone for the next one. And the next one we will have 150 grit. Another thing that I will never keep reminding is that we never apply any excessive pressure when we work with abrasive stone. I simply let them to work under their own weight and it allows me to get the best results and keeping the symmetrical line of the bevel at the top. As you might notice, is each time I change the stone, it has a different number of grits. Some of you might ask, and can I use a 1000 grit stone after 100? Of course you can, but it will take ages for you to remove those huge marks left by a coarse stone with the finest one. That's why we are sharpening the stone step by step without applying any pressure in checking every time that we have a burr after the stone we used just to be sure that we are reaching the cutting edge and we are not sharpening only the bevel. The next stone would be 240 grits. So right now we are in the middle of the process. We have a symmetrical bevel on both sides and we are removing the marks left by coarse stone with the medium one. At this stage we are shaping our cutting edge. And now it's very important not to make any mistakes, not to leave any dents or curves on the edge and the bell of course. To keep this blade nice looking and sharp at the same time. Let's see what we have now. Our patient looks better and better with each stone. Of that I'm certain. Now comes the most interesting part. We have three fine stones left. So now step by step from 600 grits we will slowly reach 3000 grits. And then we will show you how to remove the burr. And we'll make a small test of the result of our sharpening. And now we finally reached a 3000 grit stone. This would be the last one. We will work with it just a little bit to make this blade as smooth as possible. And then we will increase the angle for one click, which will allow us to remove the burr for sure. So one click will be equal to around uh, 0.1 degree. This would not change how the bevel looks, but it will allow us to remove the burr for sure. So now we will increase the angle for one click and we will remove the burr that we have. One movement per one side. You know, when it comes to removal of the burr, the best rule sounds like the more the better. But if we are removing the burr from a small knife, one movement of abrasive stone against the cutting edge per side is enough. If you want your knife to cut without any residual burr on the edge, you simply repeat this operation for about 20, 30, 50 times.
Well, I guess the test results were pretty convincing for all of you. Now, this knife is sharp, this edge is symmetrical, and from a pretty affordable EDC knife, we made a pretty affordable EDC razor, the folding one. I hope this video was useful for you. Now you know what to do if you want a professionally sharpened knife in your pocket for everyday carry. If you like this video, don't forget to press subscribe and leave your comments down below. It would be very interesting to hear your opinions about how do you think your EDC knife should be sharpened. If you have any questions, also I am ready to answer them anytime and I hope to see you in our next videos. See you next time.